A lot of time, we asked ourselves why this person or that person is so amazing. What did she do differently? And if you are now having this question, well, this video is for you. My wife and I started this project back in 2021. We invited wonderful experts around the world to join us in our program and share their beautiful journeys. And after interviewed over 1,000 successful individuals in 60 countries across 5 continents, we've found the answer. Do you want to know what is it? The answer is how they practice their thinkings. If it was only a few people say thinking is the answer, doubting is understandable. But with over 1,000 excellent men and women shared in our program, it became inevitable. If you could improve your ability to think, consequently you will improve the quality of our life. It's just that simple. So we made this video as a gift for you. It contains selected talks from those amazing individuals we interviewed to find out how they have been expanding their ability to think over the years. Enjoy it and make your best use of it. I try to listen and find something to learn from any conversation, anybody that I meet. And for example, something that sparked my curiosity and attention in this conversation we've been having is that I didn't know about this about the map and the South China Sea and the islands there and related to the Barbie movie. So after this conversation, I'm gonna go read up on it so that when I'm talking about the Barbie movie with, uh, with other people, which I'm being asked to do, I have this important piece of the context and we can talk about the politics as well. So, and that's not the only thing that I've learned, but that's just an example. Um, yeah, I, tr I, I am so conscious of every single person having so much that I could learn from them and I'm just looking for those opportunities. So thank you for that. Um, there are two parts of, of thinking that are important to me. Um, creative thinking and mm. critical thinking. Creative mm. and critical. Uh, uh, to creatively think is to expand the area of your thoughts. And to critically think is to analyze any ideas carefully. Mm. Too many people, it's like they're running through life and they never take the time that good thinking requires. Good thinking takes time. It's, mm. it's almost like the difference between people who eat all their food quickly, fast as they can. They're just always, you know, shove food in your mouth and eat fast and run and do something else. As opposed to those people who take their time and relish and savor a good meal. Mm. Thinking is the same way. Too many people wrongly believe that thinking shouldn't take much time. You can rush right through it. But thinking requires, like a good meal, it requires time. Uh, if you devote the time to it and you try to expand your mind, you can be more creative in your thinking. And then if you try to analyze ideas, okay, here's what somebody has said, but what's the evidence for that? Um, do I think that's true or not? Or could it be wrong? Uh, to critically analyze takes time. Mm. So I think we devote too much time, at least in my culture right now, we devote too much time to things that don't really matter. Um. And we don't devote enough time to things that do really matter. Uh, Socrates once said, we think about and talk about things that hardly matter at all. We don't give enough time to the truly important things. Um, and that was true of his time, it was true of our time. We entertain ourselves to death, right? We, we think about uh, the, who's won the football match, who's won the, uh, the World Cup, who's won the, and that's all good, that's all fun. We should enjoy things like that, but we should also give ourselves time to think. Um, and that's so uh, important. Then we can be more creative, then we can be more critical. And people think the word critical is a negative word. It just means looking carefully. Uh, considering carefully ideas before we embrace those ideas. Again, back to embracing and releasing. Mm. Critical thinking helps us know which ideas to embrace and which ideas to release. Um, I think I, I've approved, approved it by just reading a lot. You know, I read books, I read uh, magazine articles, journal articles, newspapers. So I read quite a bit on a number of different subjects, and I think, you know, how do all these things compare? So it may or may not be about thinking as a discipline, because I think there is something where um, 
is maybe uh, uh, maybe individual to people about how they you know carve out time for thinking or or get rid of distractions if that's possible. Um, but I would say I'm always thinking. You know, I'm a pretty introspective um, person. So, uh, but a lot of it is reflection on things like what I've read or what I've maybe seen on uh, something like what you and I are doing now or a television show. Um, so I feel all that helps me thinking because I feel I am good at making connections between, and this is something Drucker did a lot, you know, making connections between disparate parts of, uh, of, of thought or of things that you read. So I feel that being a big reader <clears throat> is really helpful but then also reflecting about that reflecting about what you read and about thinking about how does this relate to my life or my work as a leader or my work in business or whatever it might be so i think that's a very key thing you know reading observing listening you know and then relating it to your life i also take a lot of notes you know if i can it's hard in conversation but I might try to remember something and write it down later or put it into my iPhone of uh, things. So I try to keep notes mm. on things and then go back to them. And I find that that is very, um, very helpful. And I think that's something that's, you know, it's, it's something that people can do because, um, you know, just take out a pen and paper uh, or, or type it into your phone um, uh, if you, if somebody has said something that you find, you know, kind of really interesting, or you've had a, an experience that you found um, quite interesting, mm -hmm. um, or you know they're watching your show, and you know they could pause it, and maybe if they're listening to the recording, and pause it and write down something. So I would really recommend that, and that's something that worked for me that I think probably has worked for lots of other people as well. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. So I've been expanding my thinking through uh, a lot of ways, but recently, most recently, uh, a, a big step forward for me was writing the book mm. because um, because it forced me to research. I I I really um, envisioned uh, I considered this book as an exploration. And um, by the way, I think this is probably the, the, the core of everything is this curiosity mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you are able to stay curious uh, and, and stimulate your own curiosity for things, uh, that's where you, you know, keep on thinking and learning. So for me, this book was a process of exploration and I, it was amazing, it was really wonderful to dive into every, you know, all rabbit holes uh, I, I, I really went into them and um, explored so many thinkers and books articles etc so it was wonderful on a more regular uh, in more regular times when I don't have to write a book uh, I like to I have so many tabs open on my computer <laughs> and I, I I read articles I um, I don't I yeah, I don't watch TV at all, um, at all. So I save time for. There's a lot of things for, from social media networks, social media, um, articles, posts, blog posts. But writing is a great way, really. Yeah? When I don't write a book, I write uh, blog posts, and they are a really important uh, ways to to connect ideas to to you know put ideas on paper rather than have ideas you know just go across your brain and then uh, leave. You know trying to capture that and, and organize thoughts um, is, is really a good way to uh, build on the new thinking. Wow, wonderful. So I think exposing yourself to radically different ideas is helpful. Mm -hmm. And in a case study I read that kind of spells this out for me is uh, there's, like, there's a few. One is there was a hospital uh, where they were having lots of problems when a patient came in for surgery, kind of going from the nurse to the doctor back to the nurse. They were messing things up. And, and so they'd take the patient, they go from one room to the next. They, like they'd leave stuff in the patient. They'd have all these problems and infections. And they thought, like, how can we think about changing this? And what they did is they wound up going 
and bringing a Formula One racing pit crew in. And they had the pit crew evaluate what they were doing because in a pit crew, like in these races, the car comes in, you have no time at all to get all the tires off, get the car ready, get it back out there. And if you make a mistake, the car's going to crash. And in the hospital, they're doing all these handoffs between different doctors and nurses and, and they were they were messing things up. And, and by looking at how the pit crew did their work and having the pit crew look at how they did work, they brought in these outside ideas that let them think differently mm. and greatly reduce the number of, you know, accidents that happen in their hospital. And I think looking outside what you're doing is really important. I, I know in our area, uh, one of the first banks to be really consumer friendly was Commerce Bank. Mm. And what their CEO said is, I'm not looking at other banks. Consumers don't say, this is a bank, that's how they should they should be. I'm looking at Target, I'm looking at Starbucks, I'm looking at all the companies that consumers love interacting with mm. and saying, how can I be at that level? Mm. And you know, Steve Jobs, the genius bar, that came from the Ritz-Carlton. Uh, he loved the way the Ritz-Carlton served people and say, I want to be like that for Apple. So I think uh, like, when you want to think of new ideas, expose yourself to new things and, and then you could sometimes see how things come together. Uh, have time where you're just sitting down with other entrepreneurs, even who aren't in your business mm. and talking about running your businesses. Mm. Uh, and, and also I loved, I would always try to go out to dinner with clients. Like that was a great way to just think about their problems and how we can solve them. And it was also fun. Like our clients were really nice people. I think one of the biggest things for me is to overcome those same F's, right? We all have them. <laughs> me too. Um, and to not wait for it to fit in a way. So like, so for me, I'll start with, with expanding my own abilities around this and then more broadly. But, you know, for me, in the same way that I would ask other people to do is to sort of think of this as a compass, not a map. And, um, you know, I think when we follow a map, we're not thinking. When we're using a compass and we're like, this gives us a sense of where we are and where we could go and it orients us, but we make the decisions. I think that's when we, we're like actually making our own thoughts. So, like, for example, I don't have to ask all these questions all the time. I could just ask one or the other, mm. you know, that's helpful to me right now. So to push myself in any moment to own my own you know, mental compass, um, and and look for opportunities to just ask one or more of these questions and open up my mind. Um, because I, I don't find that, you know, this is my personal improvement time, <laughs> you know, like setting that aside. That doesn't work in the world of um, anything, right? Being a professional parent, and we don't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't happen until it happens, right? Uh, until you really, how about that time? So I think the most important thing for me is to to see it as not a another what that I have to do, but a how I do everything I do. Yeah. Is to um, whatever I'm doing, you know, whether if I'm just sitting down to design my next workshop, you know, how can I how can I see more of like what's happening with the people I'm signing for? What how can I like use this? I always, whenever I'm doing a workshop, always try to partner with two new, one or two new people that I've never worked with before. Like, hey, I'm doing this workshop, you know, I'm really interested in what you do, will you do it with me? So that, um, like I'm working right now with someone who's, who's focused, two people on a workshop for South by Southwest, one is focuses social emotional learning and the other one is about visual thinking. And so as we're creating this together, you know, I've, I've pulled more people, right? I've involved new people and so I'm, I'm gaining really interesting learning, really interesting observations, principles, ideas from them about how they help people solve problems, right? That's that's how this is stretched. Um, is the reason I'm able to learn about all these different things is because I just let these people into my life um, that that stretch me and and they think differently and um, and so it's really fun to mash up with them um, and then to just you know to make it always fit, like to realize that that's the single most important thing I can do. Um, so um, to just yeah. Beautiful. To, to ask these questions. Ask these questions a lot. Yeah.
Um, well, I, I think that, uh, that I'm, I'm always interested in the news. Uh, so so I, I'm always reading um, uh, newspapers, credible sources. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a guard. Yeah, credible sources. Um, but within that, uh, I would say that um, uh, critically thinking is, is absolutely important. Asking myself, um, so when, when I find something interesting or challenging, um, I will ask, um, who's written that? Um, what may have been their motivation? What might have been their bias? Uh, what might this be trying to make me think? Um, so not just absorbing that. So, so I'd say that, that reading as much as I can, but critically thinking about the motives of the author is really important as well. Um, never trying to be too easily influence one way or another, believing that the truth is always somewhere in the middle, in the grey, even with some of the most extreme voices um, in, uh, in the media and in the public eye, um, I will always try to think generously about what may be their truth um, and not try to dismiss too readily even what might seem like the most extreme views always trying to maintain a level of balance uh, I think keeps me sane as well as helps me think uh, better. Oh, <laughs> another great question. <laughs> you know, uh, what I've done for myself is listen to your heart. Listen to your heart because where your heart is, that's where your truth is. Because our mind can be, can, cannot think sometimes as you want it to be. But because we have a, a lot of influence from our parents, teachers, uh, colleagues, you know, wh whoever is in your life. And sometimes we're getting lots of information and confused what we really want. But when you when you listen to your heart, when you trust yourself, when you when you really feel what is your true desire in this life, and it can be simply as being happy and have a joy and calmness in your life. Just follow, follow those, those emotions, follow your heart. Yeah. And that's what I had to learn on a very hard <laughs> way. <laughs> There's always somebody who knows more than you do. Who are those people? Uh, so that is one of the things that I have believed in, um, I think, my whole life. Uh, I want to learn something. Who knows this thing? Somebody knows it, uh, and they're at least they know it better than I do. And I want to find those people. And sometimes that means uh, uh, reading a book. Sometimes that person is dead, and they lived a hundred years ago, but they still have that knowledge. And so a book can do that for me. Sometimes they are here today, but it's going to be hard for me to reach them. So maybe I read their articles or or things or, or and again reading or watching their videos or or listening to their podcasts depending on how you like to get information and then other times i'm going to try to have a personal conversation with that person i've done that many many times and so one of my kind of rules <laughs> when i'm trying to do something if i hear it three times that this is the thing to do i try to take action on it so i'm two of the books i'm reading right now it's because I've heard of one of them. I heard it again. I heard it again. That third time, like, I got to read it. <laughs> you know, I'll learn something. Too many people have told me you need to do this. Like, okay. And so to learn to, who is it that knows what it is that you want to do? Find those people. And if you truly exhaust that and you know there isn't anybody who knows, okay, now you're in a place of creativity and invention and you know that that's a good place to do. So is there anybody with anything similar that you can learn from? There's, there's, so there's always somebody who knows if there isn't, now it's time to be creative. Now it's time for innovation and creating new ways. 
And so there's still something you can learn from other people who are good at innovation and creativity. And so as you are needing to do that, you can also learn, okay, what are the kinds of questions they ask? So there's always somebody to be learning from. And that's the way that I approach that. Um, I read a lot. Um, I don't actually, I don't think I read as much as I, I realize how much I read when I'm in a conversation with someone and I have ideas exploding in my head or I'll say something like, you know, you really should read Lisa Feldman Barrett's seven and a half. Let me see if I can see it, it's too far away. I was going to hold the book up for you. Um, but if you just look her up. So I think reading is essential. I think, um, I think having two qualities are very essential. One is empathy. Mm. So when you encounter people that are different from you, you can't learn anything from them if you reject them because they're different. You won't learn a thing. Um, and you, you won't learn a thing for two reasons. One is you're not listening, but the other is your rejection of them will be felt by them. Mm. So they're, they're not going to talk to you or they're not going to talk to you with any intention to be connected. Mm. Um, so empathy is important. And then, um, and that's very connected to the notion of non judgment from Buddhism. Mm. We had talked about that earlier. And then the other is that we have to be willing to let go of what we thought was true. Mm when we are now faced with something that shows us it's very hard for human beings to do that mm -hmm. especially things that are connected to the culture that we're in so all of our friends believe x so we believe x and i meet you ha huh? and you tell me something different uh, it, if I'm going to listen to you and listen deeply and you're going to explain to me and share with me more than I knew, but I'm unwilling, I'm spending my whole time not really listening, but holding on mm. to what I believe as though we're in a battle, I will not learn and I will not expand True. my knowledge. And this is hard. I mean, I'm telling you this, but it might sound to the listener like, oh, I'm really good at this. No, I, I do it too. All the things I help other people with, I do. I hold on to what I thought was true. And uh, luckily my husband is um, a really good thought partner for me. And so um, <laughs> if he's trying to show me that something I think is not true. He'll just keep at it in a really good way. And sometimes with humor. And that helps me cross the bridge from holding on too tightly to letting go. And then usually there's some laughter um, at the end of that. We had a fight one time about, um, we were putting down hardwood floor in a room and um, I, I got a D in geometry. So why I was so stuck on being right, I couldn't tell you. But I was sure that I was right about how some calculation about, and it took him, I don't know how long, He's in the other room. That's his office through those doors. He could probably come in here and tell you. But it took a really long time. And all of a sudden I realized I was wrong. <laughs> and I just slumped down on the floor and said, I've been wrong this whole time. And he goes, I know. <laughs> and, you know, but see, he had to have some empathy for me to keep trying to explain without getting angry. So I said we had a fight. It was, it wasn't like a fight where you scream and yell and tell, tell the other person that they're an idiot. It wasn't that it was a intellectual argument. <laughs> so, wow. yeah. Well, I think this is going to sound a little bit critical. It's not meant to be that way, but there are too many people particularly in a post-pandemic world, post -pandemic world, that pandemic world, that are still conventional thinkers. Mm. And maybe that's more obvious to Ali and I because, you know, our business model has always been 
to kind of break break it and put it back together again, whatever it is, whether it be publishing, whether it be our media world, other things that we do, we're looking at the way the world thinks and these other people that we meet and say, well, that might work, but it's like, there's a movie out there many years ago called Groundhog Day and the star of it was Bill Murray. And the whole thing, the ethos behind the movie uh, was he woke up every day and did everything the same way every day. He kept repeating his life. Oh. And we and we think, given what's happened in the world, particularly around the pandemic, people are now, they stop for a minute. They stop to think, they stop to breathe. And I think many of them, and we're getting this feedback from the many people we talk to and the many writers we have, and we can see it in their writing, people are searching for something more. Um, they don't want to go back. Well, many of them do are very comfortable in their conventional mindset going back to what they were doing. But there's also this large group of people, they're looking for something more. They may not know what it is yet, but they don't want to go back to being their, I'll call it their robotic selves. Well, I'm going to go back to our model, which is if there isn't a business model. What we, what I've been doing, my wife and I do this together. We take, we've been taking morning walks now for 17 years. Every morning we go out for about an hour or two, three to five miles, depending on what the weather is. And we talk about what's going on in the world. We talk about what's going on in the world that we control, which would be 360 Nation, our website and everything we do. And we look at the way things are happening and we say, boy, maybe we can reinvent that for the good of people. I think that the most frequent way is reading. The more you read, the more you, you start to ask yourself important, provocative questions like, is this true? How do I know it's true? Uh, what other conclusion could I come to besides the conclusion this author is trying to lead me to? Uh, what's fact and what's opinion? Just as you read, it improves your thinking process. A second way, other than just reading, I think, is to go to very smart people and ask them questions about what you intend to do, your plan. Um, I, I, I wrote a blog once on thinking, how to think better, and one of, the, one of the points in that was to pretend that you have a board of directors. You, you may ha literally have a board of directors to go to, but if you're an entrepreneur and you, you don't have a, or you're just starting out and you don't have this group of people, imagine you did. What, imagine you were on a board of directors when somebody would present an idea to you. What would you ask them? What would you ask them about their financing? What would you ask them about their staff? What would you want to know about their plans in the future? What would you want to know about their marketing? If you would think like an advisor and think like you're a person, if you're starting a new project or product or service, what would a board of directors ask me? And then prepare yourself. That helps you to think through any kind of project, any kind of plan that you want to do, even if it's financial planning for your family or uh, planning how to build character into your kids. That thought process comes from reading in many subject areas and applying maybe, maybe in different ways, but it also comes from your, your ability to listen to good advice and listen to feedback and apply it in your situation. You know, I wrote a book back in 2016 called Transformational Thinking. The first step toward organizational, individual and organizational greatness. Along with that, I did a workbook. And, and here's the workbook. This is what the workbook looks like, right? It, you can find both of them on Amazon, right? Okay. And to think differently, you got to challenge all assumptions. So there are no what we call sacred cows. You you look at everything and you examine it as if it's new. For instance, you you know in the background there there's a guitar. Yeah. You examine it and say, well, you know, I know it's a guitar now, but how could I? What could I do with it to make it something totally different? How could I repurpose it and it have even greater use? So I got to challenge the existence of the guitar, right? It's like I mentioned Uber. I'm challenging the existence of the taxi business, right? How can I how can I repurpose it? How can I do it differently, right? So thinking, you know, you have 
you have thought, decisions, actions, and results. In order to change the result, the bottom line, you got to change your thought process. When you change your thoughts, the types of decisions that you make change. When the types of decisions you make change, the, the actions that you now take change, right? So you have to be able to examine how you think and why you think the way that you do. Often a lot of that comes from our environment. We're conditioned to think a particular way, given our education, given our family, given our friends. But I need to intentionally think. I need to intentionally be aware of what my thoughts are, where they're coming from. I need to intentionally look at my mental model because we have mental models all around everything we do when you wake up in the morning and you get out of bed and you decide to go shower there's a certain ritual that you have every day around that right that's your mental model around what that is well if you want to do something different say for instance you decide to go jogging early in the morning then now that routine changes so your mental model around that changes right you have to first in order to implement any change any transformation the first thing you got to do is examine that mental model. How do I, why do I see it the way that I do, right? And then I got to ask the question, how can I deconstruct it, tear it down, and now I got to reconstruct it, right? I got to build it anew so that I, it, it'll serve me well. Now, all of our mental models, we're not going to deconstruct because some of us serve us very, serve us very well. It's only when your mental model doesn't serve you well that you do go through the deconstruction, reconstruction. It's like the butterfly and the caterpillar, right? I like to use that example. You got the caterpillar who goes from the, you, you got the cat, from caterpillar to butterfly, right? The butterfly is not a new caterpillar. It is a new entity. It is a new being, right? The butterfly never goes back to being the caterpillar. It goes through a metamorphosis of what we call the messy middle. And in that, this ugly little creature becomes a beautiful creature, right? Something brand new. You have to do the same thing with your thoughts. You have to be able to deconstruct your thoughts just like the butterfly goes through the metamorphosis to become a, a, a butterfly. You have to be able to, to, to do that and reconstruct it. Uh, three ways read to think write to think and network to think so first of all you need to uh, to read which does not mean you know one book per week but at least let's say two books per year at least mm -hmm. so so you need to nurture your thinking with uh, novel ideas also outside you know your field of expertise so but you know, just by reading, uh, you definitely can absorb novel ideas and approaches. The second, as I was saying, is writing. Mm. So when I was at Harvard Business School as a young case a writer and research assistant, I experimented first time the power of writing. So put down in writing your thoughts and uh, how powerful this can be in refining your thinking and spotting, uh, let's say, overlooked items, uh, asking yourself new questions. And the third point is about networking. So don't close yourself in a silos. Exchange as much as possible, converse as much as possible with others. Uh, we tend to say that we don't have time <laughs> to read, to write and to network. Well, maybe it's time to make the time for yeah. reading, for writing, and for networking. Beautiful. Thank you. Read, write, and networking, right? Mm. Um, what a great question. This. How can I improve my thinking? Mm. Ah, you know, I always look at what's happening to me. Mm. I think um, awareness is a gift. It's the best gift that you can give to yourself or others. Mm. And if I can be fully and completely aware in this moment right now, that will allow me to understand how am I a cause in what I'm experiencing right now.
and what is the message for me that will help me to be a better version of who i am because who I, who, who i am is how i lead my life yep and in order to improve my thinking i need to understand i need to go back to who i am being here in this situation because the being that you are is 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 driving the thinking that you have and if i can go back and look at the thought pattern that i'm getting right now the thoughts which are driving my behavior right now will definitely assist me to be a better version of who i am because if when in order to improve your thinking i have to improve who i am and when i'm saying improve i am i think that's a wrong statement i need to revisit who i am mm. and if i can revisit who i am i just need to move from one being to another being i just need to look at my own narrative and shift my narrative yes. and if i can explore that who i am being the who part behind the thinking i can drive a different behavior that will drive a different results all together so that's how i'll approach what you're asking beautiful beautiful You know, there's many ways that I continue to grow my thinking. Mm. So, first and foremost, I'm a lifelong learner. I, if I could go back to school today, I would, <laughs> and study. You know, lots of things that I just I'm so curious about. So, I think the the primary way that I grow my thinking is to continue to be learning and reading. and talking with people and asking questions and you know i i'm so fortunate to be um part of a couple of professional groups that allow me to do that with some amazing colleagues you know one of those is the you know the marshall goldsmith hunter coaches um uh, which is where you know i get to um learn and share and grow and evolve with you know the amazing you know um counterparts in that organization um another is the recognized expert group that is uh the dory clark found it. Yeah. Um I have some amazing colleagues there who, you know, we, you know, get to talk about and learn from and share, you know, on on a variety of topics, not just leadership. Um and I think that brings me to my second point, which is, you know, the more that I can continue to learn and grow my knowledge in different areas. Mm. the more it helps me think differently about leadership and continue to inform my thinking mm. so that it gives me a different way to look at it you know so i continue to um for example um i continue to learn ballroom dance mm. and i continue to compete in ballroom dance which gives me another way of you know looking at leadership right um i continue to travel so that i'm continually exposed to new things mm. and different things and i'm looking at what i know as normal through a different lens yeah um which gives me a way to think about it um and i think you know just surrounding myself with people who challenge me with amazing questions like you just asked um also help me grow and continue to push that thinking um and that is you know as a as hopefully a thought leader in this space of leadership going forward um that is what i hope to still bring to this space you know a different way to think about this and a different way for people to um um think about their actions and their behaviors and their beliefs and how those are shaped to create how they show up in the world beautiful i love reading i love reading about um history and historical figures who have done remarkable things my wife and i went to live in rome for 3 months this past year last spring and i just loved re- looking reading and then visiting all these historical sites where these great orators these great soldiers great engineers building aqueducts and roads and um sanitation and so on uh, you, you just you know, i find reading history inspiring i'm reading a book about thomas edison right now who had 1100 patents and thousands of inventions and 
I love the book on Leonardo da Vinci or some of the artists like Donatello or Botticelli or um, uh, Michelangelo or I mean I, I find the Renaissance period particularly fascinating but um, I say reading is a very very useful thing to expand your mind and help you think um, another thing I do a lot of is um, I love uh, meditating I don't have a lot of time for it but um, I, I meditate at least five minutes a day sometimes 10 minutes sometimes 15 it just depends on what I have I use a an application called Calm, C-A-L-M, but there's another one out there called Headspace and there's more. But, so I think they help you organize yourself and sometimes there's little lectures or sometimes, but there's the, the effect of, uh, of doing a little bit of meditation, being mindful of your where you are in, in life and in space and, and it's, kind of, it's something I recommend highly, uh, sort of also it helps you be grateful or have gratitude towards what 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 you've been able to uh, be, be accomplish and be involved with and so I think that's a that's a couple of there's a couple of things there that might be might be useful um, uh, you know working hard is fun and interesting but you have to give a little bit of breaks too I mean so I love to run and bike ride bicycles and uh, hike and I swim and I sail boats and so so you have to have some pursuits that give you some time away from work so that you actually can enjoy life too so that's a couple of thoughts I've had yeah no so basically um, I one of the things that I do is that I love to read mm. so when and, and I'll, I'll be completely honest, uh, as, as somebody who learned how to speak English as a second language, I am not a very fast reader with a physical book. So what I do is I do audiobooks. So audiobooks are becoming, I think, uh, very, very popular. 30% at least of the people actually use audiobooks. Um, so I, I listen to, to a lot of books, um, you know, whether it's like I mentioned, Marshall, Sally, Dory, all of the different people in my community that write, that are so amazing, Daniel Kahneman. Um, and I also read a lot of articles. Um, and it's, it's very interesting because that was not, how do I say, reading and writing is something that I did, but now I do it with intent. Mm. Like I want to be better, I want to be inspired. And you're only inspired by the people, again, you, you surround yourself with, by the people you, you put in your network and, and the books and the, you know, whether it's the, the movies that inspire you. But I feel like having that as part of your everyday life is very, very important. You know, podcasts or however you learn, if you'd like to read or listen, I always advise people to find a way to integrate learning mm. uh, and inspiration into their everyday life. Beautiful. Thank you so much. It's a great question. Uh, I definitely speak less than many people do. And I speak more slowly than most people do. And I, uh, in doing so, I try to be deliberate with my words. Uh, when I was on active duty, I, I used to tell people around me that words mean things. So you had, to, you had to be precise in your language. And, and in the military, there is a precision to uh, each, each word and term has a specific meaning. Um, but I, I think that uh, in order to be uh, thoughtful, you need to be informing yourself through a variety of means. I was not a great reader as a young adult. I've eased into reading and now I read and consume books at a pretty high rate. Uh, that hasn't always been the case. Uh, I, I was just looking at my, my number because I talked to some other colleagues about this and I'm, you know, we're in mid-December, I've read over 30 books this year. Uh, this is in addition to my academic reading that was required of the, of the PhD. So these are business books that I've read. Now, I've been told that the most successful executives acknowledge reading at least part of as many as 60 books per year. 
Obviously, that's over a book a week. Hmm. The average American does not read one book in a, in a year. Yeah. So it's a skill that has to be developed. Uh, I don't I don't say that it automatically translates to being more thoughtful, but you can't help but learn from others if you if you consciously try to try to uh, take in more information. Uh, I was not a big podcast person until a couple of years ago. Uh, I, I knew they were out there, but I didn't really know how to find what might appeal to me. And I've, I've only in the last few years become uh, more attuned to uh, what podcasts can offer as a delivery vehicle of new information. Mm. And uh, I, I, as I take these things in, a podcast or a book, I'm not trying to consume the entire thing and get every message. I think I think that's unreasonable. But if you can get just a few things out of each book, mm. you're better for it, and you'll apply it in some way. Uh, you know, might be subconscious application, but it will it will become part of your your growing expertise. Wonderful. Uh, I really believe that <clears throat> that reading books reading good books and taking them seriously uh, and talking about them with other people is is the key. Um, the, the college where my husband um, was a professor is a, is a college called St. John's mm. College. They have campuses in Santa Fe and in Annapolis, Maryland. And they're um, the original great books school. They're, they're, they're uh, curriculum is, is a great books curriculum, which means that everybody reads uh, actual books, not textbooks, but you know, you start with the Greeks, you start with Homer, <clears throat> and you move on through through the Greeks to the Romans to the um, through the Middle Ages and reading you know Thomas Aquinas and then the Enlightenment and on and it's all the, the undergraduate program is all Western thinkers, obviously. But the, <clears throat> but the key is that um, you are reading actual books, there's no lecture, um, and uh, the, the teaching style is all seminar, seminar style. Mm. So everybody, everybody's reading a book together, and it's led by the, the professors or tutors, and they, and they lead the dialogue mm. about the book. And, it's a. I sound like I'm giving an advertisement for St. John's, but really I'm just I'm I'm advocating for the reading of great texts um, and talking about them with like-minded people as a way to improve not only our ability to think but our ability to think together. Oh, think together. Wow. In collaboration with other with other people. Beautiful. Wow, how I've been expanding my ability to think. Um, <laughs> that's such a big question, and I feel pressured to answer it in a in a big and lofty way, and that's not disappointing. Um, you know, so um, I think one way that I've been trying to think about this to sort of expand my ability to think um, is truly to to slow down. Um, I, I have, this is really advice that's come from one of my, one of my favorite collaborators, Cassie Holmes, um, and it's work that other people have talked about as well, but, you know, making time for deep thinking, um, you know, versus sort of fast thinking, if you will. Um, there are a lot of things that pop up in my everyday life that are that seem urgent and I can sort of you know do quick responses to and I often have to stop myself from you know just digging into the urgent and slowing down mm. so that I have the ability to actually think and you know to your quote expand my ability to do that um, and it's hard it's really hard because you know I feel like when you get to a certain point in life it's like 
I've got little kids and I've got my work and family and you know there's so many different things going on that it's easy to kind of do like a little bit here and there a little bit there and you know and I I have to keep reminding myself to sort of slow down and try to just focus on one thing because that results in deeper you know more expansive thinking if you will beautiful beautiful I would say that the thing that the thought that has helped me grow the most is realizing that if I have the mindset and believe something can happen, whether it be specific to a conflict, like this conflict is going to be resolved. Even when I don't know the path to get there, the believing it helps me to see and you know have that vision and perception the other piece so the believe it i'm going to fix and resolve this even when i have no idea how to do it will get me there that determination second is i would say i'm trying to think of what would be the most important because of course i have quite a few uh I, I still think that's the most important one, the belief that it will happen. And oh, self, I, I think awareness of perspective, and I call it like change your view, where many of us will say, I might say to someone, you know, we need to like look at that objectively. And some will go, well, I am looking at it objectively, which is very difficult to do because we're all subjective period people. We bring our experiences. And but finding ways to be more objective has helped me see things in broader perspectives and figure out where to focus when I need to focus. And I kind of do it like put myself in the balcony, so to speak. Um, it's figurative, but physically, like thinking of yourself in the balcony and looking at all the things that are in front of you and seeing that broader perspective and then focusing. Because a lot of times we focus too much where, you know, I'll have someone come and go, I can't work with that person. And they're so focused on that one bad conversation and then I'll just say, well, you've been working with them for 25 years, you know, brought in. So let's talk about, you know, what has gone well and what changed. So it's that broadening and the, like the broad perspective and the focus and figuring out how to balance that and use both are key. Beautiful. So, so firstly, I'm not an expert. Thank you, though, for 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 the for the for the term. But I think you know, uh, I'm I'm always learning. Um, I work with very smart people every day. Um, I have a firm belief that everyone has an inner genius. Uh, I think you have an inner genius. I have an inner genius. I think. You know, a lot of people around me have an inner genius and an inner genius is something that's unique to her. And I am always, always on a path to want to discover what your genius is, because if I can understand what your genius is, I can then partner with you to do some amazing things going forward. Um, because I'm very clear, I don't know everything and I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I'm very clear. I think there are a lot of other people out there who are incredibly bright and I'm trying to either unlock that for them or I'm trying to discover it so that I can learn from them. And, and that, that's, that's what I, 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 I want to do every single day uh, as a leader and that's how I want to stay sharp and that's how I want to grow. It is diminishing, isn't it? I feel like the more social media we have, the more we almost use that to numb and not think. And um, I notice when I do that too, and that's not helpful. 
the the moments where I feel like I have the greatest thinking are when I get to have conversations like this and I get to meet different people and hear about their experiences or I listen to a podcast. I love to listen when I'm walking in the woods and I come back with all of these ideas and things that I want to pay attention to and learn about. And so the positive is you get all this thinking. The negative is you have to make sure you're listening to different voices and getting exposure so you're getting a broad perspective. But um that's the the plus side, I guess, of the social media age that we're in today. Podcasts are almost the listening to the radio the way that was in, you know, however many years ago. And so there's such a wealth of insight and information and perspective that can be gained from that. Yeah, for me, it's just the ability to ask questions. Mm. So ultimately, I, I think, I think, I think, um, <laughs> I have the ability, you know, I think, um, and I have the ability to process and think critically because I ask questions with the intention of wanting to learn, right? So I think so often people ask questions or they speak because they want to be heard. Mm. And I think somebody who does the opposite, which is ask questions because they want to listen and learn. Mm really, really impacts our ability to think critically. So that is a huge one for me. I want to hear, I want to ask questions, and I want to listen mm -hmm. so I can come to my own conclusions, so I can think critically, and so I can develop myself and the people that I work with. Yeah. I guess first uh, is open mind. Mm -hmm. uh, trying not, although it's hard sometimes, to be too judgmental, to give the benefit of the doubt, before you make your decision or your judgment about something or someone. I don't think anyone who can travel the world and see other cultures can enjoy it unless you have an open mind and accept there are other ways of doing things, even other ways of thinking about time, for example, or about how you treat the elderly or, or whatever the topic might be. So open mind and not too judgmental. Uh, I think it's important to develop your skill of lateral thinking, not to be funneled, have your thinking funneled into one direction, but to open your mind and look for relationships that might add to your understanding of the situation. And um, I guess the third thing I would say is uh, I'm a glass half full person. I usually try to see the positive in situations, the positive in people, until proven otherwise. And I like to be very optimistic in uh, taking my approach to any business opportunity or any personal relationship until I'm shown that you know maybe I was wrong and or maybe I should adjust my thinking. There's a great quote that I've used in speeches before. And it's ascribed sometimes to Abraham Lincoln, but I'm not really sure. And he was asked, what's the difference between a pessimist and an optimist? And he said, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, while an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. And I guess I've developed a way of thinking very optimistically. Recently or ever since? Over time, over time, I, you know, moving to France, then moving to London, and then to, to um, Finland, and then especially to Turkey, which was quite a culture shock. Uh, you, learn, you have to learn to be more tolerant and open-minded. Uh, there are many different ways that things get done that are different than the way you were grown up to think they get done. And uh, you could fight it, uh, which could be aggravation and anxiety and not lead to great well-being. Or you could learn to understand it. Not, I'm not saying you change your values about what's important in life, but you learn to understand that maybe you need to take different pathways to get the same thing done in a different culture, in a different environment.
well, during the last year and a half, I've really given myself the time to write. Mm -hmm. And I give myself breaks to do things that I need to do to recuperate. I, I'm fortunate that I um, am financially in such a place that I can pick and choose what I want to do. I wasn't always in that position. Um, but what I've done is I've recognized that today, later in my life, I am. And so I run really, really, really fast. I exhaust myself when I do a turnaround. I actually give myself time off after that turnaround to sink in and do my mental recharge. And for me, mental recharging is finding things that intellectually stimulate me. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm a big reader, so being able to read and write is actually how I process information and come up with my next plan. Wow. Good to see you again. And you are back on our 499th uh, episode. Uh, by going and studying topics that do not seem to have anything to do with what I normally focus on. So, you know, my role, my job is to help businesses and people be more successful. I, I focus mostly on things like leadership and strategy and teamwork, but I do from time to time read uh, physics and cosmology and poetry and history, uh, things that are, that are far out of the realm of what I normally focus on. And it's surprising how often that something in an obscure area of poetry uh, will will influence the way I think about something that I do in my work every day. So being willing to read, think, to, to study, read, think about things that are out of your comfort zone and possibly, I hate to kind of say this, but maybe not even that interesting to you, but forcing yourself to say, like physics, I don't understand it, or I didn't understand, I still understand it very little, but I've read enough that it at least has expanded the way I think about science and other things. I always uh, seek opinions of those who I don't agree with on the surface level. I'm constantly challenging myself by, by getting input from some individuals that perhaps I'm not seeing their standpoint, I'm not understanding fully uh, their arguments and I'm trying to learn from them by listening first and foremost. I think that nowadays the social media uh, is really doing us a great disservice. Because what's happening is we're constantly looking for the uh, to solidify our own opinions, right? Yeah. And when we solidify in our own opinions, the algorithms are then helping us, quote unquote, helping us. They're not helping us. They're constantly feeding us with a material of our preference. Yeah. And then what ends up happening is we're not expanding our horizons. We're not improving our thinking. Now, I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying seek an opinion of someone who is so vastly different from you that you're going to end up in some sort of a horrific argument. I'm not saying that per se. But let's say you're you're having some sort of philosophical debate and you're not seeing something quite clearly as that other individual. That is the person you want to talk to. Because if you're consistently having a room full of people that agree with you, neither one of you are growing. And you're no one is really thinking. All we're doing is validating each other's opinion. Well so so that's one of my advice. <laughs> Uh, I read at least a book a week and have for probably the last 30 years. Okay. And so curiosity is the answer. What don't I know? What, what can I learn that will make me more effective? And you start to realize that you know, after you've read a lot of books and, you know, the placeholder behind you, interestingly, is a whole bunch of books. And you start to pick up themes and ideas that are consistent and they change you. And one of the things that I've done for the last 30 years is whenever I read a book that's nonfiction, so first of all, I read almost mostly. I don't really make time to read fiction, although there's nothing wrong with fiction. They just tend to lean into nonfiction. I will write all over my book and then I will type up notes that I can read later. And so I'll just show you. Um, this, is, this is just a small sample of book summaries that I have I'm, for every book that I've read over the last 25, 30 years. So what happens is when I go on an airplane and I'm traveling, 
I'll take 10 of those with me and just go through them. And it reinforces, you know, you don't remember everything that you read in a book, but I have the notes of what I thought was most important. And it's changed me, you know? And by the way, I take those and I give them to people so that it's not just, because it's a time intensive thing. But when I give them to other people, particularly people who work for me, I'm influencing them. So it's a it's a benefit for me to say, hey, I I I read I read the book, I typed up the notes. Would you like them? And people are like, yeah, I don't have to spend all those hours that you did. Sure, you know. But now I'm sharing information, and now I'm having a conversation with, with someone about something that I read. So we're reinforcing it, and they're going, well, what about this? And so curiosity is the answer. That's a great question. Um, I like what works for me is doing some reflection mm. and 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 like on an ongoing basis, uh, like being able to, you know, sometimes it's just like looking at the end of the day and saying, okay, what what worked well in this day, but if I could do today all over again, what would I do differently? And so, you know, having the ability to sit back, like slow down, like slow down our thinking. Sometimes we're in so much of a rush, we don't do this. Uh, but being able to slow things down and be able to take stock of, you know, what are we grateful for in this moment? What is an area of opportunity that we might want to focus on tomorrow? Uh, I take that reflection to an annual basis as well. And there's, um, I don't know if you've heard of something called, um, it's called 10Q. Yeah. And it's 10 questions at the end of one year that you basically answer a question every day. They're all reflective questions. Like, for example, you know, what was your greatest achievement over this year? Um, or um, what is the one thing or what is the one person you want to build a relationship with next year? And so it's like reflective, but it forecasts. And what happens is you get a question every day. It's a different question every day. There's only 10 in the series. And what happens at the end of the 10 questions is your responses are locked in a vault. And then what happens the next year, like a whole year later, the vault is unlocked and you get your answers back. And so you can actually reflect back and you can see, okay, was I on track with some of those things? Like the things that I said I would develop over the next 12 months, did I do those things? Well, why didn't I do those things? And it's a great way to take stock of what's important in your life, where do you want to make some shifts or changes or developments. And then when you see all of your answers unlocked 12 months later, like you, you almost forget about what you put in, right? Because it was a whole year before, but it just brings to the surface. Okay. Yeah. Here are the areas that I was able to change my thinking on, or I was able to develop. Here are some areas where maybe I'm still stuck. And it is a great way to shine a spotlight on those things, the things that you want to celebrate, but then the things that maybe are so challenging that they require additional attention. Mm. So I would say that's probably like two ways that, you know, I just continue to evolve my own thinking and certainly conversations with individuals like yourself you know where you're learning new things you're hearing new perspectives you're receiving new insights those are all things that influence how you approach the world how you show up in this life um and again those things are not events either we don't just stop learning like we need to continue evolving our ways of thinking we need to keep evolving our skills and mm -hmm you know, developing areas in our life um, so that we continue to, you know, feel fulfilled, experience new things. That's what life's all about. Thank you very much. Uh, well, that that is something that, that I actually talk about a lot. I, mean, I mentioned earlier that I, I'm not just an introvert. I'm like a devout introvert. I don't want to be anything but an introvert. I, I like the situation that I'm in now. When I need to go do a keynote or a book tour or whatever, I, I can rise to that occasion. So some people would say I'm a situational introvert, but I 
found out very early in my life, probably as a teenager, that I get my energy from quiet reflection. That that some people get energized by being around people or listening to podcasts or whatever triggers them, whatever inspires them. Even though I've traveled all over the world and I have five kids and five grandkids and I love them dearly, I am better off even now to walk in the outfield of a baseball field just by myself. Or we live up in the mountains in Colorado, I can walk out my back door and there's you know acres and acres and acres of land I can walk out of. And I have five acres here we can walk around. And me and my two dogs can just go for a nice, quiet walk that allows for or enables quiet reflection. And and that's where I go, you know what, I could have done that better. Or I could learn more from that experience. Or or I, I should have handled that conversation differently. In that moment I I wasn't treating people with respect. I was frustrated. I I was upset. I I didn't treat them with respect that I talk about all the time. What would I do differently? And there are other times, I'll be honest with you, where I go, you know what? I was too nice. I was a jerk and you don't get to be a jerk and work for us. You just don't. Right? So I'm not saying it, it, it's, it's all to, uh, this, this reflection isn't all for me. It's my team and for my companies and for my baseball teams. Um, yes, I learn a lot from it, but from my reflection moments, I need, I need to find a way to help other people learn too. I need to learn how to be a med, better mentor for them. So they can better grow professionally and personally, and and that's um, you know if if I if I didn't do anything else in the rest of my life besides uh, mentor professionals and coach youth baseball players, I'd be a happy man. Beautiful. And, and I'll just clarify that question, right? So I I, I look at it a little bit differently, mm-hmm. right? So. It's, it's not about our improving our ability to think because our ability to think can improve when we learn, when we um, open ourselves to different perspectives, engage with people who are different than us, right? But I look at it more from can we improve our ability and how we behave, mm-hmm. right? So, so when we have a thought, we may not be able to stop our thinking. We may not be able to improve our thought. We may not be able to change each other as thoughts or behavior, or, or thoughts, or, or the way that people think. But how am I changing or helping people change their behavior? Mm-hmm. And so that we can do. We can help give people guardrails and boundaries and different ways of thinking about things so they change their behavior. And as people change their behavior, their thoughts also change. Yeah. Right? So if you think about like a bad habit, you know, you have a bad habit. Let's say, for example, you eat a lot when you're stressed out, right? I do that. Sometimes when I'm stressing out, I have a tendency to overeat, right? So I know that bad habit of mine. And so what I do is when I know that I'm feeling stressed out, I have to be aware that my automatic reaction, because of the way that my thoughts are are in my brain work, Mm -hmm. is go eat. It's going to be, I can't stop that thought. It, it just comes there, right? So I can't change the way that my brain thinks that way, but what I can do is improve my habits, my reaction to that thought. Mm-hmm. So when I know that I'm stressed out, what am I gonna do? Instead of going and eating 20 chocolate chip cookies, which would be what I would love to do, I'll go do 20 minutes on the treadmill, right? So I've had to replace that bad habit with a behavior, a more positive behavior. And so as I do that, I would hope that my thinking improves to say, okay, exercise is going to improve my thinking. It's going to improve my the serotonin, all the chemicals in my brain, and that hopefully will change my thoughts, right? So I kind of look at it from the flip perspective. How can I change my behaviors to change my thinking versus how do I change people's thinking to change their behaviors? <laughs> love that question love it um it's not always easy to practice what one preaches you know it, it, it's quite difficult sometimes and i think you know we we are hypocrites ourselves as humans and i I've, I've been on a lifelong quest to understand why humans are hypocritical including myself um but one of the things i do 
there's several things I do actually. I I have a almost a morning routine that I I read actually, um, and I'm, I'm not advocate for the, these these people in any way, but they've helped me in my quest. But um, Price Pritchard's uh, U squared uh, is a concept where it, it talks about how do you position yourself for uh, exponential growth, uh, quantum leap, right? And it, it's kind of a uh, a book and a, and a philosophy that, that really helps me ground me and keep me focused and, and believe in my capabilities. So I, I kind of read read some of the material from from that individual's work. Which I'm person? A, I'm a huge. Uh, I'll show. I don't know if you can see on my screen, but um, this. I can um, see you too. You, mm. you squared. If you, you put squared. that into Google, mm. um, you'll you'll find that out very very easily. And it's a high velocity formula for mul multiplying your personal effectiveness in quantum leaps. I read I read it. It's one page per chapter, and I read it really uh, as a way to to nourish me. To you know think of this as the foundation, the scaffolding mm. that helps me do what I do. And so that that philosophy really helps me. Um, Another thing that I do, and I'm I'm a real proponent of Pema Chodron, who is a Buddhist monk, mm. and she she writes about you know she's got a lot of different books about embracing ambiguity, about being comfortable in in uncomfortable situations, and and sometimes that helps me at a spiritual level mm. to keep me focused on this this path. And then I then I'm an advocate of Bob Proctor and a lot of the work of, around Bob Proctor and thinking into results. Uh, and that, that again, those three different sources help me on my journey as part of a, a daily ritual. And and the other thing I do, Ha, is I I'm always looking at where my blind spots are. And I use a tool called the Jahari window. Mm. And, I, and I can send you in the show notes or, or whatever makes sense. But the Jahari window, I teach this to leadership teams across the world. And if I don't use it myself, I'm a bit of a hypocrite, right? So I, I use it to understand and try to understand where am I not paying attention to? Where, what, what feedback am I getting that I need to address and that I don't want to address, that I'm scared to address? Why am I scared to address it? And then I go deeper and I ask myself some discovery questions. So I'm always looking at where I can improve, where I can enhance my, my capabilities. And I don't mean just more accolades and more qualifications. I mean, self-improvement. Yeah. And so for me, becoming aware of some of those triggers that I have and some of those things that, that hold me back. Um, you know, I, I, I sometimes look in the mirror and I, I, you know, Mel Robbins, I don't know if, if you uh, know Mel Robbins work, but you know, just high five yourself in the mirror, mm. right? Yeah. Show yourself that you love yourself. These are real things, anyone listening to this when it comes out will know me if they know me they know exactly what I'm talking about because because I talk to them so much about it um, because I'm real and I'm accountable for being real and I'm a fired human at the end of the day right so so they're the things that I, I leverage in in my my world actually that strengthens my ability to do this stuff and take this further out into the world beautiful beautiful yeah that's great. Well, for me, um, I love uh, diverse perspectives and ideas and, and domains. So one of the things I try to do that I think then in turn helps me think more rigor rigorously and become more curious is expose myself to, to things I don't know anything about. Uh. Um, and uh, that was why actually consulting was really a good fit for me because you know you have to become an expert in whatever the client wants or needs um, at any given given moment. But um, for example, like I love to uh, get newsletters where there's like sections on like random interesting things. So we have a Slack channel at work called Readful where like people will just post things and whatever they're reading, and you know it's such a um, diverse group of employees and they're all over the world that there's things I would never stumble into myself but what I find is that um, again like introducing myself to those new ideas I start to see patterns I start to like challenge assumptions underlying like the way that I was taught about something mm -hmm. um, 
like one one thing I've been doing. I had a sabbatical in in uh, August, and I went to Greece um, for that month. And I decided to just like read a lot of Buddhism and you know things like that because I'm so you know steeped on a day to day basis and in Western culture. And I just was like, I want to challenge some of my core principles about like you know what is a good life, what is happiness, what yeah. is, you know, and um, I think that just like constantly introducing new ideas to uh, to to force you to really think about your thinking mm. um, and about your knowledge base and like it allows you to get more rigorous about it. Beautiful. Thanks a lot for sharing that. I think so. And and I want to go back to say that you're absolutely right. You and your wife are absolutely right about identifying the, the thinking capacity, capabilities, strategies are somehow something's happened and they're, they're not being leveraged and not being tapped into. They're not, they're not, they're not being utilized well. And I, and I consistently see when I work with organizations that successful leaders or a successful leadership trait is systems wide thinking, not just thinking about your own department or your own company or your own sliver of whatever, but it's how does this work in this entire system? What's going on outside the system that's impacting it? So that's a, and, and, and critical thinking along with those, those lines too. So there's critical thinking that needs to happen. And some people are just about, all the positive things that are going to happen. And some people are just preparing for all the negative things that are going to happen. And some people are just too busy collecting information about everything that they don't then move to a decision and action. So it's mm -hmm. how do we balance all this stuff? How do we make it all fit together and work together in, a, in an integrated worldview that will help us to better understand the world and show up better in the world so that we know that we are not missing out on anything and that we're not that we're basically being inclusive. It's really about inclusivity of all the diverse different energies and and powers and and styles that exist so that we can always show up at our best and be the best person that we can be. Mm. Mm. First of all, I don't think it's all about doing. You have to think first. <laughs> if you think <laughs> okay. first, um, you don't want people to be doing a lot of things without thinking. That's dangerous. Yeah. So I also believe everything starts with knowledge and words. You understand, you make meaning of concepts and you have to think about it and process it before you can apply things and do them. Mm. So there is a process, you know, to transformation. You start with your mind, right? And, we, and our minds are extremely powerful and the processing of that is so important. So I'm always learning new things. Mm. So, I think, and I'm always challenging things. So when I listen to things that people tell me, I constantly criticize or not criticize what they're saying, but I critique it. I critique, is this true? Is that your opinion? Is that fact? And then I will research to find out if what they're saying is validated by, uh, by other information. So I'm constantly critically analyzing the barrage of information that we're getting every single day fake news. I don't take all the news of what people say as fact. Absolutely not. In fact, I assume it's probably biased. Mm. You know, I, you know, all the things that are happening in politics in the world, I assume that the truth is somewhere in between the extreme left, the extreme right view, and both are sharing, like they're looking at the elephant from their perspective, but they don't see the full elephant, you know? So I really strive to look to see as many perspectives as I can to see the elephant. And I think none of us can see the full elephant, right? Um, from all perspectives, right? Because some of us are seeing it from the back and we only see the tail. Some of us see it from the front and only see the trunk. And both are not wrong because from their perspective, there's a trunk and a tail. Mm. If, you know, so I think the idea and, and, and knowledge and thinking, critical thinking is just such an important part in perspectives. So I travel around the world so I can understand different perspectives. I've been to North Korea, mm. you know, and I'm criticized for going to North Korea. And they say, why do you go there? See, because I want to understand 
how they see the world and their perspective. I want to think critically about before I make decisions. I want to understand: Are you seeing the tail or the trunk?、Mm-hmm. Because I can assert that my view is correct, and I can argue that it's a trunk.、Mm-hmm. I don't even realize or have the wisdom to realize that you're standing in the back and you see the tail. Then it's foolishness. So that's why I spend a lot of time thinking. I don't give strong points of view to assert that it's the truck because that's unwise.、Mm. So I will try to understand different points of view. I constantly tr-、um, look at views, and I'm challenging my thinking all the time. I'll give one crazy story of what I've done, and I do encourage everyone watching this to do it. <clears throat> I'm American, and the American politics is.、Um, Probably another K drama series because it's so dramatic and emotional, up and down. And、um, I spent time on the KKK website.、Oh. Do you know the KKK? Yep. So the KKK is the Ku Klux Klan, and they are、uh, a white supremacist group in the U.S. You, you might, my, people might wonder why am I going to the KKK website? Because I want to understand. I want to understand their point of view and their perspectives and why they feel so strongly about what they feel. And I think in 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 society, if we were to stop and pause, to think not just from our head but also from our hearts,、mm. what is it that connects us and what is it that separates us? I think that process of critical thinking is extremely important for humanity and for human flourishing. Actually, going back to the main topic. And so I, I spend time being uncomfortable. It makes me very uncomfortable to read certain articles. It makes me very uncomfortable to watch certain videos.、Mm. But I force myself to watch them, so that I can understand perspective and that I can critique it. What is it about what they said that I agree with? What is it that I don't agree with? Why do I disagree with that? And then I form my own points of view. There's a basic truth I believe inside of all of us individually, and it isn't about you know truth versus lies or something. It's about、um, as I think it was Shakespeare said, "To thine own self be true," and、um, and there is there is a、uh, there is a wiring inside of each of us that we need to understand, and I would say that.、Uh, My journey over these sixty-five years, and you have, <laughs> you have explored that journey in ways no other interviewer has done. So I want to congratulate you on just a wonderful interview. You,、uh, you have gotten me to tell stories that no one's ever asked me to tell before, all in one episode. So I am going to treasure this interview, okay?、Wow. Because. Uh, and I want to share this with people, my family even, because this will give them deep insights into who I am as a person.、Um, but along the way, what I learned is that life, and particularly entrepreneurial life, is a journey of self-discovery. It is a journey to self, and it's amazing how often in our lives. We deny who we are as people. We deny how we are wired. We deny. We we believe there's something wrong with us, and we need to change to conform how the world thinks about us. And I would say my journey of thinking was to figure out why am I so troubled in all of these other areas of my life? What is it that's bothering me? And what could be done about it? And so, I think we just simply need to pour our excess energy, our time, just in thinking about how to make our world and the world a better place. And that, in fact, if we are driven by a need to leave the world a better place than we found it. Uh, and that we have a unique contribution to make.、Uh, that we should spend our time thinking about who are we, how do we use who we are to make that contribution to the world, and how do we think about how we deny those other voices that say, 
no, you're just dreaming. It can't happen that way. You need to go conform to the way the world wants. And so uh, that would be m my general thoughts on how each of us should think about what the future holds and what we want it to hold for us. My ability to think um, is influenced by by conversations I have with people. So I I have um, I've been fortunate to have several good mentors mm -hmm. and um, trusted advisors, and so I think constantly looking who's in that orbit, who 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 do I see that's inspiring, that is making a uh, not just a, a positive impact, but a profound impact. Mm -hmm in different areas and so I, I would say my thinking is very much influenced by the conversations I have with them and then um, probably my insatiable curiosity so I try to read everything I can get my hands on and so uh, you know and, and trying new things I'm playing around with AI like how does that work what you know just experimenting what what can I do and that, that's kind of a popular thing reading as many articles as I can what's that impact that I have um, on the way we work and, and how people um, create and innovate. And so I would say my thinking is, is really influenced by constantly pursuing more thinking <laughs> with, with people. Um, it's that curiosity, it's with people and it's with um, finding something that I find interesting and trying to do a deep dive on, all right, well, what are the other sides to this story, not just the headlines? Wow. I'm going to try it myself. So. Wow. Hello, Sanjay. So Hi. good to see you in person again. Hi. Right? So we're going to have a follow-up meeting today. And uh, so my wife and I, we're working on a, uh, a book. And the book is about thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we're trying to help people to, to grow their ability to think through asking experts like you uh, to see how have you been developed your thinking over the years? Can you share? <laughs> That's a great question. And I've never sort of thought about how I think, uh -huh. <laughs> to be honest. But I think um, I try to keep it as simple as possible uh -huh. and as close to the ground as possible because at, at, at least my experience has been um, if you can articulate things, if you can make things simple, mm. then the clarity of thought becomes really, very really good. Uh -huh. So I try to keep it as simple as possible. And I think um, people say, just tell me in one sentence, what do you think? And that's the most difficult thing. Uh -huh. And I think we have to think a lot about how to keep things simple. Mm. So, so in my view, simplicity is something which I have trying to learn in the as I think and about the thought process. Wow. So simplicity is a luxury now because yeah. the things around us are so complicated, right? So tell us a tip or two about how you can make things to a very simple way. <laughs> <laughs> so so I I think um, that's where a lot of reflection, a lot of thought a lot of thinking about the pros and cons are very, very important. Mm. And I think after thinking very, very deeply about something, mm. you can sort of think a little bit simpler, simpler and articulate uh -huh. those sort of things. So, so I think it needs a lot of thought process, a lot of reflection mm. to keep things simple. Absolutely. Um, one last question is there's a, there's a whole universe of, um, between thinking and the whole universe about doing yeah. and people are always saying yeah, some people hold the ground that thinking is more important and do, or some people will say doing is more important personally to you which one is more important and why we just recently completed a strategy exercise of the company ah. and the strategy exercise was about what to do and what not to do ah. which needed a lot of thinking so if you have to go north, you cannot go south in the same direction. So it was about, okay, you have so many options and what is it that you want to do in the next five years? 
So this related to the vision and strategy, mm. but I think strategy is as good as the execution of the strategy. Mm. So you can think, but I think most important is the execution of what you think. Uh. And I think this is where we have to keep things simple and focus on just those things which have the highest impact. Mm. Yeah, because if you try to do 10 things or 20 things in in my view, then you cannot execute. Them. Yeah. So if you think of two, three things or five things, prioritize what is the most important thing which is going to have the highest impact mm. and then focus on execution. Beautiful. So thinking and doing, I think they go hand in hand. Hand in hand. All righty. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sanjay. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'll, I'll share something that is probably atypical. I mean, you're going to get a lot of expertise around, you know, how to think better and all that. The one thing I would ask you to think about in terms of expanding your thinking is put a question to yourself mm. in a very positive, not in like a heavy, heavy way, but in a positive way. Like, you know, how if if I if before you go to bed, ask yourself. How might I do whatever I'm trying to do? And especially if I had all the money in the world, all the resources in the world, or in fact, I had a magic wand and I could do anything I want, okay? And then, well, two things. The time before you sleep, sometimes you have a great imagination. And you'll be surprised that sometimes when you sleep, you come up with ideas and solutions. Put a notepad by your bed and write them down when you wake up. Like, hey, I came up with this this interesting new solution or this new business idea and you know sometimes oh god these are really stupid but sometimes you'll come up with some of your best craziest funnest ideas during both the time before you fall asleep and when you wake uh, when you dream and write them down when you wake up beautiful um colleagues who who disagree with me you know that, and 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 who give pushback. You know the 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 one of the best things about working with Jeff and Andy, and there's a, a monthly live stream I host along with the two of them and Amanda McCulloch. Amanda is the executive director of the Data Visualization Society. Is we don't agree on everything, and they'll they but but we will debate these things and and say well here's why I feel differently about this. And and force me to reconsider and go. You know what? That's a, a really valid point. I hadn't considered that before. So there's the growth comes from um, keeping an open mind and just kind of recognizing um, when when being closed to these things have harmed me. It, uh, that 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 I think I was much uh, less flexible and um, more, what's the word that I'm looking for? Stu um, um, intractable 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And I thought I had all the answers and, and no, I don't. You know, that, 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 um, so you want, you, you want good colleagues who will give you pushback and you want people to find the flaws. You want people to find, uh, find the errors. Hold, um, there's a really good quote um, at the end of, of the book, Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me. Uh, I wish I, I'm sorry, I can't remember who the authors are, but um, uh, uh, it's going to take too long. I almost know certainly where the book is right behind me and can probably find the quote, but essentially it, it is saying you know the people who point out your flaws or that or the things they're your most uh, um their greatest benefactors they're helping you grow they're helping you get better i hope there's some evidence of that uh, actually i i first thing that comes to mind is i think reading is very important there are uh, many leaders of 
thought out there. Now my brain is seems to be naturally constructed to create a lot of joy for me when I connect ideas. Everybody may not be wired that way, but I think reading is uh, one way to really open yourself up to different kinds of thought and certainly to read about thought. Um, one of the things that became a fascination for me, you were talking about uh, noise, and I believe in noise he mentions fundamental attribution error uh, as one of the cognitive errors. And again, I think this thing is something that um, really shows up in emotional intelligence, and that's that uh, at, I can talk about the U.S. culture in particular. I think it's extremely prevalent here, and it may be a human thing based on survival, but I think we often judge people um, by making them responsible for how we're experiencing them. So, for instance, uh, I was in a, a job where I was the um, program manager of talent development, and I often had to deal with conflict between people in the organization. And there was one young man who was in the uh, help desk department who was particularly irascible, and people eventually totally dismissed him. I really had to work with him behaviorally to the best of my ability. But the flip side was, is that we decide that somebody's behavior is who they are. And that takes me back to the idea that our emotions are not who we are. And we often identify with our emotions and, you know, take them personally and oh, I'm a bad person because I'm having uncomfortable feelings, blah, blah, blah. But we also do that on a much bigger uh, stage. And, and we will look at people and decide that it's a character flaw instead of a product of circumstances if they're expressing themselves in a way that we're not comfortable with. So things like that, becoming aware of uh, things like cognitive errors, which is something that has been studied. Now again, some of this becomes an aspect of what is social reality. Um, and social reality is not always correct. But when you look at some of these big discoveries about thought and thinking and logic, and explore those, that helps you change your thinking because it helps you separate from uh, what is perhaps negative social reality. And all of it was developed for seemingly positive reason. The other thing is meditation. I haven't talked about meditation, but I am a meditator. I do study mindfulness practices, and that is one of the things that has made me self-aware. And self-awareness is really the beginning and the foundation of emotional intelligence, and particularly as part of that emotional self-awareness. I can't believe it's taken me this long in our conversation to say that. <laughs> but uh, a big part of self-awareness is noticing your thinking. And also... Reading. Yeah, and, and, uh, and part of noticing your thinking is noticing that it's not always true. Oh, uh, the reading would be one. I mm. mean, it, it, it's never, it's never stopped reading. I'm a bit slower now. Oh, look, when I, when I actually became self-employed, I made a conscious decision then that if I was going to be self-employed where I didn't have the support of a system, I was going to have to do something to position myself differently in the world. Mm. So over the next years, I spent money going to the IMD in Switzerland, Institute of Management Development in Switzerland. I went to Wharton Business School for a week. 
I did a whole range of str- what you'd call strategic professional development mm. interventions. I went to MIT in, in Boston to study entrepreneurship. Mm. And they were, if you like, centre points. The Institute of Company Directors in Australia to a lesser extent, but you know, uh, there's a program in Australia called, and I think it's global, called the Hoffman Quadrinity, which is a, if you like, a human potential spiritual development process. So I did the 10 days there. Mm. So I've strategically invested in interventions to shape my core, if you like. Mm. Uh, not to mention being married to a woman who can shake it, but he's just by like looking at me and saying, where did you get that idea from? Uh, you know, Sally's been a great source of inspiration for me because of her genuine happiness. Mm. And you know, I just look, how did you get to be like that? You know, I'm kind of, kind of chunking out stuff all the time and Sally's just happy. <laughs> Why do you need this, you know? <laughs> so that, I mean, I've strategic, I've worked hard at it. I have to say, I've, I've worked hard to, uh, and you know, I mean, I, I do community. I was national president of the professional body in training in Australia, and I got heavily involved in that. I did a lot of what you'd call community pro bono work. I worked for a congregation of religious people for 10 years on a day a month for nothing. And that shook me to the core uh, in different ways. I. Uh, Got involved in professional sport in Australia, so I was a professional rugby administrator for 10 years mm. uh, and finished up being on the chairman of, of one of the major rugby teams in Australia and on the board of Australian Rugby. Wow. So I, th- they were all kind of what you do uh, to keep yourself on the edge. Mm. 